<laughs> We'd like to do our school song. Kuma Perichi. Welcome to our school. We are the children of God of Plains. We come from many nations, but together we stand as one. The spirit of the land protects us and keeps our culture strong. The struggle has been hard and the road has been long. We started off as an Art of 12 school but with only five high school students and now our retention rate to year 12 is 19-20% above the national average. We need you to choose one of these jobs, that's what we need you to do. I noticed nobody put their hands up when somebody asked, have they made a resume yet? In mainstream schools, our kids are largely excluded from curriculum, their, their aboriginality is ignored. What we wanted our kids to have at Ghana Plains is a strong identity to strengthen their identity through curriculum. Reviving Ghana language has given kids so much confidence. If you'd visited the school over the 12 years periodically as I had, um, you could see the jumps in confidence of kids speaking the language. Okay, when we're in the classroom, it's really good if we can use the Ghana words for the things in the room. Now a lot of these words are original Ghana words and I'll explain where they come from. Others are words that we've adapted to use for modern day. Now, the Ghana word for ice is maki. When you look at ice you can see through it. So what do you think that might be their word for? When they first saw maki tau, ice, you can see through ice. Window. Right? Window, okay, well done. When they first saw glass, to them it reminded them of ice. Our studies of language give us a way to own and become custodians of Ghana land. This year we spent some time in the mangroves looking at geography of the place but also how it related to what we know of the Ghana people in the past and how language can be related to that place and to how Ghana people moved and related to the land and what the Ghana dreaming was and how this is still a connection that our students can have, not just by learning language at school, but by actually visiting and becoming custodians of those significant places. It gets more salty in the conditions that it's growing, so it needs to pump it out even as much as it can to survive, and you'll see all the salt crystals on the back. Language also gives us a way of making our music program very joyful. It's been a way that our students have been able to learn language very easily. We can learn phrases and we can learn words. to have Kevin Dygan and people like Snooky Varko and Shuri Watkins involved in writing music in Ghana and our children performing music and singing in Ghana. And uh, we'll just brainstorm a heap of words together and then we can put them into some sort of order later. All right? Because yeah. motion and moving, I mean, we can, might have something about up and down. That's what we need is appearing. All right, so write it down. So we've got Yua Parawadli Tekandi. Tekandi. Yeah? To come out. Yeah, good, okay. In the primary section, there's a lot of joyfulness in what the children do. A lot of that joyfulness comes from encouraging their expression. So we have uh, dance and drama and art. Why not like that? 
and they've got the snow at the bottom. Why take the whole page with the bird? Why not have just that? That's they've depicted the desert yeah. like that. Okay, it could be airs rock, or it could be just the desert. The sky, look how they've depicted the clouds like that, and then they've just painted the bird, and it's so simple and it works. But that's why you get the black coming through that, and that's just cadmium yellow, it's not yellow ochre. So it's a blending of traditional and, and modern. We are in a global art project of Indigenous schools, so we have a strong art program in our school. Um, and one of our students is going to have their painting on a stamp in 2000. And that was as a result of the Global Art Project. One of my best painters as well. Oh, oh gorgeous. My name is Alan Parquet. I've done this painting, looking for a snake in the dizzy, because he's very hungry. I can see it up here. That's what he's thinking for. Hello, my name is Lydia, and I've done a painting in Stella's class. And this is a uh, echidna. It is raining today, and he is walking to the park. My name is Ron Quite, and I designed this lizard, and it's a younger thing, and I like it. And People in the class say it's nice, that's all. Uh, the Global Art Project produces a calendar of work from all the students in the project, which we give to each of the families at our school, and which is supported by the Australian Education Union in the, in the printing of it. There's no profits made with the Global Art Project. It is purely the joy of exchanging art and seeing how Indigenous cultures contribute to the way children express themselves in that medium. It's also really important across the school to keep a balance of Indigenous and non-Indigenous teachers. It's very, very important to have role models for our kids as teachers and as a, as a principal. But it's also important for them to know that there are non-Indigenous supporters of our struggle. Because without that non-Indigenous support, our struggle would be very, very difficult. Students have to, have to realise that we live in a, we're a minority group, in a, a big group of punyas. invited to sing at openings and um, our language teacher Sheree Watkins is invited to open important meetings and conferences at state and, and national level that happens in Adelaide and welcome people to Ghana land in Ghana language. we concentrate at Ghana Plains is on attendance. In the mainstream, the statistics for our students attending school were such that attendance improvement really needed to be concentrated on across the whole system. 
Now at Ghana Plains, because we draw our students from the same area as the high school zone, we need to actually bus our children into school. So that actually helps with attendance as well. We follow up when students aren't at school with phone calls or with home visits. And we show that we care that our students develop good attendance habits. And one of the things that we have to encourage in our students is a responsibility to attend school, that's their own responsibilities. They're not relying on other people in the family to get them there, that they need to be up and ready for the bus when it comes. And it's a two-way thing. You encourage that responsibility in students, but you also encourage teachers to make the curriculum so connected with what the students are doing that the students actually want to come to school. From our statistics last year, we realised that we need to spend more of our money on that transition year seven to year eight to ensure that students going into secondary have the literacy levels that will help them cope with secondary education. Remember next year, because the mess will change, so stop, think, if not, ask for help. Language. Clayton is naturally gifted in the use and forms of language, working way beyond expectations. Clayton, you do really good stuff. Not a problem. Now on the back, I've written my comment for the year and only Gillian's written hers. I've written, Clayton is an excellent student who has been committed to his learning all year. He is naturally gifted in the areas of Ghana language and English language. So this is a brilliant report. Okay, there's no problems in any of the areas. And our attention to year 12 and our graduates at year 12 prove how successful we are. We've had uh, politicians come to visit Ghana Plains as part of a national inquiry about what is the best thing to do for Aboriginal students and we are part of best practice. Having the secondary kids in the school adds a dimension that you can't put a price on because our little kids, they have role models there in front of them. They can see our kids succeeding. And when you talk to our secondary students, um, they are wonderful. They, they are really determined to, to succeed. Well, I started school at Craigmore in year eight and went to halfway through year 10 because I found out there like, there's hardly any people, like Aboriginal people to help you out. Like, didn't know what I was going to do when I leave school. But then like, everybody helped me at this kind of things and then pushed me away to, what to do after school. They pushed me to get a job and help me through school and try to give me a good, so I can make it through it. And I passed this year because I got heaps of help from them. It's been pretty good. Yeah. That's about it. One of our students, Elsie Fisher, achieved Student of the Year, mainly because of her participation in district, state and national forums. Um, it felt really good um, having to learn a language and speak it and knowing that other people around you thought it was a dead language and um, having to speak Ghana language to a group of teachers and ex-teachers. I guess it's something that I want to also continue with it at the museum as well. And um, I think it also Aboriginal Studies has helped me as well because a lot of the issues that we that we talk about in the museum were also the same issues that we spoke about in the school lessons of Aboriginal studies, yeah. That's good. Yeah.